They thought it was haunted with the ghosts of those murdered by the horse soldiers. The cave was haunted with dead Indian ghosts? <laughs> to be honest, I was more concerned with the live ones than the dead ones. you know so much about engines? A few years back, I was married to two Mescalero women. At the same time? Yeah, they were sisters. Polygyny is traditional among the Mescalero. So what happened? Oh, I had to get out of there. Those girls never shut up. Both of them nagging at me all the time. Drove me half crazy. I haven't seen them since. No, I mean, what happened with Grey Wolf? Oh, well... I pursued him into the Cave of Death. I came upon this flooded grotto, and that's when I saw him. He came to me unarmed and unafraid. His voice echoed in the shadows. And I sensed he meant me no harm. You carry great darkness in your heart, and if you do not release it, it will claim your soul. The sound of his voice put some kind of ancient Indian spell on me. as his story unfolded in my mind. You will come to this place again and kill many more men and the darkness will grow until it consumes everything that you are. The soul would have no <sighs> rain I had no tears. He said I was a great warrior, a coyote man, unequaled by any other pale-faced warrior, or something like that. The snakes will bite shadows of your past until a venom poisons your heart and an echo of the song of the dead summons the spirits deep from within the mountains. I didn't quite get what he was saying, but there was definitely snakes. And indeed, his warriors surrounded me and attacked me like hungry wolverines. They couldn't stop me though, and Grey Wolf wasn't in the mood for idle talk. see any way out of this trap. But suddenly, one just appeared. Kinda like a mirror. I felt like I would be lost in that damn cave forever. Finally, I found myself back outside, perched on the edge of a precipice, overlooking a thundering white water river. To get where I was going required several leaps of faith, but no way in hell I was turning back. chased after him, determined to make him explain the meaning of all that mumbo-jumbo. Mumbo-jumbo is right. Are you making this all up as you go? A few details <sighs> may be fuzzy, brother, but I am relating exactly what happened to me. 
There were dozens of Apache warriors aiming at me from on high. Ah, dozens. Well, maybe not dozens, but there was a lot of them. At least three or four. Well, more than that, little lady. I had a steep climb up creek ahead of me and scrambled up those rocks like a mountain goat. I was determined to locate Grey Wolf and find out exactly what the hell he was trying to tell me. And wouldn't you know it, that crafty son of a bitch let me ride into a trap. What kind of trap? Well, son, there had to be at least a hundred Apaches surrounding me. A hundred? God be my witness. Oh, come on. Who are you kidding? Hey, I believe you. Come on, tell us how it ended. All right, but I'm not gonna drag this out. Where were we? You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of them. You were surrounded by a hundred Apache warriors. Well, I didn't take the time to count them exactly, but there were a lot of them. And in the end, a path appeared before me that I had not seen before. I followed it as I desperately needed to find out what Grey Wolf was trying to tell me. But it was like that son of a bitch disappeared into thin air. Never did find him. And never did collect my goddamn bounty. Thank you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand.
Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of right? I did my best, sir. We all did. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Daltons got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. The story was Bob Dalton's girl was always riding and about how he had no ambition. Oh, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Coffeville just to shut her up. Right. It's always the woman's fault. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Others paid dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. First of all, it was high noon. A posse of U.S. Deputy Marshals were on the rooftop across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the Daltons for months, but now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. We just gotta wait to see the bitches out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. Brave men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. <laughs> We've got company. Now you're up. heroic men like him. He did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Jim Bowie, Davy Crockett. Is that Silas Green? Son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> 